second one. And I'll sit over here. Hey everyone, it's Jim from Melatone Amps. Charles is just over here operating the camera. Um, in today's episode number four, I think, we're going to talk a little bit about amp rolling. Well, pre-amp rolling and monoblock, and you know what, you, get, you know what I mean. <laughs> but first, caution everyone, electronics and tube amplifiers can have very high voltages present, which can be lethal. Exercise extreme caution when working around them. Always consult a professional technician when in doubt. Okay, now the idea for talking about amp rolling um, came from two sources. One is a gentleman that I follow online who's an amateur designer and builder of his own gear, both solid state and tube gear. And years ago he made a very interesting post and he said, if you're ever bored with the sound of your tube gear, just put it in the closet and go and find uh, a piece of solid state gear. Maybe it's something you have had lying around for years uh, and maybe even you loved it at the time. Put it back into your system. And he said, do that for a week and then switch back to your tube gear and you'll be in love <laughs> with your tubes all over again. And, and that's sort of along the lines of what happened with us. We actually have been running the uh, GU50 monoblocks. That's a higher powered Class A amp, at least by the standards of uh, a single uh, output tube, I think. Charles, what, what's our output on this? Is it eight and a half watts? Uh, somewhere around there. Eight and a half watts RMS, something like that. And it replaced um, the very first kit monoblock that I introduced. Um, and uh, that was the URI, and its final version is 2.25 watts RMS. So this is over three times the power, and it has, it ha there's differences. It has a really, really fast slew rate. A slew rate is just how fast the amplifier responds to signal changes. So let's say um, somebody really whacks the drum hard or um, hits a chord on a guitar really fast. Um, how quick does the amplifier respond to that quick transient surge? Um, and of course that applies sonically to everything musically that you're listening to. And this is superb at that. In fact, it has, it has, a, very, it has a very unique sound, both because it's class A and because it's got more power it's got a honking big transformer. In fact, over at Tube Lab earlier in the day, we filmed an episode in which we were talking about what to look for when you're shopping for an upgrade or a new tube amp. And the power transformer in particular is something to really pay attention to. And this Hammond is huge. This thing weighs a lot. I, I think we shipped a couple earlier today and they scaled the whole box scaled in at nine kilos. Uh, but most of that nine kilos was this. <laughs> in fact, the box that this thing sits inside the box takes up, what, about a quarter of the whole shipping box. Anyways, um, so we've, we've had this in system since it was, it was introduced and we sold quite a few of them and we love the sound. But um, I wanted to do some rejuvenating of the chassis and, and I still, as you can see, I haven't finished the, GU, the original GU50 chassis or the plint, sorry. But I had redone the Uris and I thought, well, why don't we put the Uris in the system and then eventually I'll get around to redoing the plinth and using my new finishing method, which is gorgeous, by the way. Um, and uh, we put the Uris into the system. I checked them over. I did a little bit of cleanup to make sure that the contacts on the top caps and everything were nice and clean and got rid of the oxidization. And these, these little monoblocks sounded absolutely amazing. So sure, they don't have quite the speed of response that the GU50 does. And yes, they can't, they don't have as much power but with an efficient speaker system, we actually don't need the eight watts of power. It's nice to have, and it makes a bit of a difference when you have a loud passage, particularly with big music, like classical music, or big band jazz, or rock and roll. 
or um, EDM, uh, which is just always loud. Um, okay. I always know when, <laughs> where I used to live, um, I always knew when a friend was coming into the driveway because he doesn't actually turn the car on until there's some EDM playing loud. <laughs> Anyways, um, but yeah, so what we did was we rolled in a pair of Yuri monoblocks. The sound became a little bit more refined, not quite as punchy, and it was very different. And I fell in love with the Yuri sound all over again, and I didn't want to move them out. Now, eventually I'll get the plinths refinished on the GU50, and we'll probably roll them back in, and I'll probably be in love with these all over again. They're both Class A amps, they're both pure Class A amps, so they, they don't have any feedback. They're both using a single driver tube, and um, they're both using a single power tube. But sonically, even though they have that Class A sound, that immediate, really detailed, um, very low distortion um, uh, sound, um, they are they are significantly different and it was for us it was a really nice change because music that mm. maybe you're getting a little bit tired of but enjoyed listening to on a regular cycle through the system all of a sudden sounded fresh <laughs> what about preamps i actually should have started with preamps but um my helper over there is 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 busy um uh, keeping an eye on on other things um preamps can make an absolutely huge difference you know Power amps, monoblocks, um, they can make a difference, but nothing like what a preamp can. If you change out a preamp, even changing, you know, this is our universal 6 or 12 SN7 preamp. It's our best-selling kit. And uh, for obvious reasons, this is just, the 6 SN7 and it's higher voltage 12 SN7. This, there is no other preamp tube in which there are so many choices. They're, they're almost infinite, there's so many choices. Now, if you just said how many choices of great sounding tubes, the, the field gets a little bit narrower. But you can roll in a set of tubes and make a huge difference with this preamp, or you can roll in a different preamp. And that's another thing that happened in our system fairly recently. We, we developed the, the first modern line preamp. It's gonna be out probably in about a month. We've got all of the boards are designed. Many of them are actually already here. We just have to order. Uh, I think we only have the main PCB has to, we have a revision coming in. Yeah, I think it's the last one. And once it's here, um, it'll be actually going into test builders. We're taking, um, we are taking, um, um, taking down names for test builders who want to uh, build the first ones. And uh, I think we have a couple on the list already, and we'll probably have room for two more at the most, maybe. Um, but this is a very different sounding preamp. The power supply design is different. Is it better or worse? No. They both have their merits. This is a dual mono power supply design. It's got a lot of reserved power. Um, it's what? maybe 10 times bigger than it needs to be, but in a preamp that makes a huge difference sonically. It costs more money to buy, the, buy bigger iron, but it's always, always worth it. Um, and the 6SN7 is a, is a very warm, rich sounding tube with really good detail. It's a really nice balance between warmth and detail. And the best vintage tubes really bring that balance sort of to a perfect uh, or very fine level. The 6N1P preamp has, well, it has the 6N1P as, as a single preamp tube. It's a dual triode, so it's handling, the tube is handling both the left and right uh, channels. And the cathode follower is the same thing. It's a 6N6P that's handling both channels. And the, 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 the preamp itself is sonically completely different than, than the Universal. The 6N1P is a tube that has a very open, um, almost, it's almost like the, uh, the circuit that the 6N1P is in, if it's well designed, um, it's almost like the music comes from a completely black background. 
If you're an audiophile, you know what I'm talking about. And that's not just about the noise floor, it's also something unique about the sonics of the particular tube. And the 6N6P as a cathode follower is no slouch in that department either. So with a different power supply and different tubes, when we changed over to this, we fell in love immediately. When we went, when we had this out of the system and we were working on it again and we put the universal back in, we fell in love with this. So if you have, if you're lucky enough to have um, a number of preamps and power amps lying around, changing them up can really completely change how you listen to your music. It can get you excited again about tracks that you, you've loved and maybe gotten a little bit tired of. And if you're just starting out in, in, uh, with tube gear or you're just starting out in audio period and you don't have a lot of amps and preamps lying around, in fact, you're just barely getting a system together, I remember what it was like when I was a young audiophile. I think it was maybe 14. I built my first kit preamp. 14? Yeah. I think it was summer I was 14. And, um, and I started building a system based on that first preamp. And then I had a, gr a really good turntable. And then I eventually had a great cartridge. Um, and then I had a good mono block. And then eventually I ended up with you know, multiple pieces of gear. So I could, I could try various combinations. So if you're just starting out, don't stress about it. In your future will be gear that you've, that you've loved in the past, that maybe you've changed out, you haven't sold, and you might do a little upgrading on that gear, or you might just, you know, clean it up. <laughs> I had to, you know, all I really had to do uh, with the Uri's, uh, even after I think a year and a half or two years sitting on the shelf was get the dust off them. They were dusty. In fact, they were disgustingly dusty. Put a new finish on the plinth, clean the contacts for all of the uh, working parts, and Bob's your uncle. It was ready to go into the system and it, and it, it made a huge difference. So, yeah, it, it, if you want to uh, refresh your your musical enjoyment, rolling in a different piece of gear, even a fairly similar sounding piece of gear like these two, you'll notice the difference right away and it'll get, you'll get excited all over again with, uh, with the sound of tubes. Okay, hopefully uh, that gave you um, some ideas on how to refresh your sound and stay interested in, um, in, the, in uh, the sound of your system. And there's nothing to say that you can't just roll back in gear a week later. And I guarantee that the sound of your system, you'll, you'll be in love with it all over again. So, and you know, music is life and staying interested and enjoying the sound of your system is, is really where it's at. So this is Jim and Charles signing off. Cheers everyone. <laughs>